everyone it's nice to see you again I haven't made a video in a long time this one is a little bit different to the beauty things that I've done in the past today I'm actually going to do a DIY project and it is how to make your own loom you've probably seen a lot of like wool hangings and weavings and how you make weavings is on a loom um, it's a hobby that I have taken up recently and I decided that I wanted to make my own loom because the other one that I made was just a bit too basic for my needs. It's pretty simple and it's fairly inexpensive. I think all up this cost me about 35 New Zealand dollars to make and all of the supplies are really easy to get from just a regular hardware store and most of the tools are stuff that most people will have lying around. Some of them maybe not but um, you might be able to borrow some or find an alternative. There are a couple of things to note. When you are weaving sometimes the weaving will kind of go in an hourglass shape as you go up the weaving um, and that can be prevented by having another piece of wood that goes across here with spaces in it as well. So you put each of your warp strings through the spaces and that just kind of keeps everything taut so that your weaving doesn't end up going in an hourglass shape. I haven't made one of those yet but I'm planning on doing that so when I get around to that I will let you know what I do and how I do it um, in case you also want to make one. So uh, let me know what you think and if you make one please link me a picture of it or tweet me or anything like that or in, on Instagram is really good. I'll link that down below as well so you can check that out. I would love if you like linked me on Instagram if you make one because that'd be really really cool to see. Keep watching to figure out how to make this and hopefully it's informative and fairly easy to follow. The materials you will need are two 24 by 24 by 900 millimeter pieces of wood. Um, we've used pine, so basically you just need 24 millimeter square lengths of wood and you need a minimum of 1.6 meters. You need 50 6 millimeter by 32 millimeter fluted dowels, four 30 millimeter screws and some PVA glue. The tools you will need are a wood saw, hammer, ruler or straight edge, tape measure, drill bits in three different sizes. So you need four millimeters, six millimeters and seven millimeters. You need a drill, so preferably a power drill, a manual one, probably not the best. You need a screwdriver that fits the screws that you've got. Um, a pencil, a rubber, and P80 sandpaper, which isn't pictured, but it's definitely useful. Just a quick note about the saw. The one pictured is actually a hacksaw, not a wood saw. Um, it's just that we only had a hacksaw, so that's what we used, but you definitely would want a wood saw in preference, so yeah. The measurements that you need for the cuts are two pieces that are 450 millimeters long so that that will be for the sides and for the top and bottom you need two pieces that are 350 millimeters long so if you don't want to make these cuts yourself or you you don't have the tools to do them you can always ask the local hardware store if they can cut them for you most of them are able to do that so just ask and yeah hopefully they'll be able to help you out if you need them to step one is measuring the cuts for the sides so you need to measure the side pieces from one of the pieces of wood that you've got. So that's one of the 24 by 24 by 900 mil pieces. You need to mark two points, 450 millimeters in from each side. So I'm just marking here at 450 as you can see. And I've got the two points and then I'm connecting them with my ruler. I'm going to measure the top and the bottom cuts now. So first you want to mark two points 350 millimeters in from one side. And then it's 700 mils mark two points again
connect all of those different points up as you can see and those will be where you make your cuts. Now we need to cut the wood. So we first cut this, um, the top and bottom pieces. So that's got that's two different cuts at the 350 mil mark and then the 700 mark. So you will have a little scrap piece on the end. We've sped this up. It takes a little while, but hopefully you'll be able to do it if you're cutting it yourself. Have patience if you've never cut wood before. I don't really have any tips because I suck at it, which is why my boyfriend is doing it for me. So those are the top and the bottom pieces. And now we are cutting the side pieces, which is basically just cutting that other piece of wood straight in half. So here I'm just showing you the layout of the frame and what it will look like when it's all finished. So as you can see, the top and the bottom pieces lay on top of the side pieces. And this is really useful so that you have a space underneath the warp strings to move your hands in and out. Now we are going to measure the dowel spaces. So first you need to find the center point of the top and bottom pieces. In the middle, as you can see, I've got 12 millimeters that I'm just measuring out there and I continue to do this along the pieces of wood and then I will join those uh, marks up with the ruler so that there's a center line. And I'm joining them up as you can see. At 175 millimeters along, you want to mark a point and then draw a line down and that is our very dead center where the center dowel will go. Next is just measuring outward from that center point in 12 millimeter increments and those are where all of the other dowels will go. All up, there will be 25 dowels per top and bottom piece. It's a little tedious, but try to be careful with your measurements measure twice so that you don't make any mistakes when you go to drill the holes. I'm just darkening up those lines there so that they're easy to see. And there's a close up with all the marks that you need. Step five is drilling the dowel holes with the six millimeter drill bit. To drill the dowel holes, you wanna go about halfway into the wood. So you definitely don't wanna go all the way through the wood. You need to just go halfway. So take your time and try to keep the holes as center along the horizontal as you can. But you know, it will be a little bit wonky. It's kind of unavoidable, but yeah, just try to make sure everything's as evenly spaced as possible and as straight as possible. But don't freak out too much if it doesn't happen. Again, this is very tedious and it takes some time, so I've sped it up. Oh, and a little tip. If you are worried about drilling too far in, what you can do is you can just put a little bit of tape around the drill bit. I've just used some washi tape and that meant that I kind of had a guide so that I didn't drill too far into the wood. Step six is cleaning up the holes and sanding them. So you might find that the dowel holes are quite messy as you can see here. So I've just used a scalpel tool to just kind of dig out some of those little bits of wood that are kind of stuck to the outside of the holes, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I'm just cleaning that up and then um, I sanded the wood all the way along the hole so that it was nice and smooth. Now we need to hammer in those dowels so I'm just using a really big wooden hammer, but you can use a regular regular hammer if you want it. Just the wooden one is a little bit more gentle on the dowels. Also, if you want them to be very, very firmly in the holes, you can use a little bit of PVA glue just to kind of glue them in there, but like they should fit pretty snugly, so you probably won't need to glue them, but 
yeah, if you find that they come out or if things are a little bit loose or you just want to make sure that they're definitely stuck in there, then use a bit of PVA glue. Ta-da! Pretty, pretty dowels. Okay, now we need to measure where the screws are going to go. So take your top and bottom pieces, so those are the pieces with the dowels, and measure from the side 12 millimeters in. Rule a line so that it's very clear all the way across. Basically, you are using a cross here to find the center. And we're going to do the same thing on the side pieces as well. So again, measure in 12 millimeters from the side and also from either the top or the bottom. Basically, you just have to find center again. Now we need to drill the pilot holes with the four millimeter drill bit. Because we're gonna be drilling all the way through the top and bottom pieces, you will need to put a scrap piece of wood underneath so that you don't drill into whatever surface is underneath. And then just go all the way through. See, all the way through. Now for the side pieces, you do not wanna go all the way through. You just want to go about halfway. So take your time, be careful, try not to rush. Now we're going to drill the countersink holes with the 7mm drill bit into the top and bottom pieces. So drill about halfway in to the top and bottom pieces and this just means that the screws when we screw them in are going to sit beneath the surface of the wood so it's a little bit tidier and it kind of looks nice. If you don't want to do this you don't have to but you will need to buy longer screws. So just make sure that whatever screws you buy are long enough to go completely through the top and bottom pieces and about halfway through the side pieces. Now you need to glue and screw the pieces together. So initially when I did this, I didn't glue the pieces together. I just decided to try screwing them together to see if that was strong enough, but I definitely found that gluing was necessary. First you need to sand around the pilot holes on all of the pieces of wood. Then clean them off with a dry cloth just to get that dust off. Then you can put the PVA glue on. So as you can see I'm just putting the PVA glue onto the side pieces. Then I will place the bottom piece on top of the glue. Um, I've also already um, screwed the screws in so that they come out of the bottom of the dowel piece of wood just slightly and that way I can kind of find the hole on the side piece a little bit easier, especially with the glue there because visibility is a little bit more difficult. Here's just a close up of me screwing the screw in before I put the glue on so you can see what I mean when I say that the screw is coming through a little bit. And do be careful with the PVA glue, some of it will ooze out so you might just want to wipe it with a cloth a bit. And just a note, when you are screwing the screws in, don't completely screw them in like very very tightly until after you've got all of the screws in. So just do them most of the way and then once everything's finished you can go back and tighten them up at the end. You also want to make sure that the frame is squared properly so that it's not wonky at all. So just check that. I haven't like shown myself doing that, but you definitely want to give that a check just to make sure it's not on an angle or anything. And this is the finished loom. You will need to leave the loom at least overnight just to let the, the PVA glue cure a bit. So this is the first weaving that I did on the loom. It's a Christmas one. It's kind of a Scandinavian inspired red and white design. So yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, 
the the weaving did t- go into a little bit of a, an, an hourglass or a tapered shape at the top so yeah I definitely need to make that that wooden spacer thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time bye and it's called Jade which is my middle name so that is very fitting and my eyes have a lot of green in them so that will look nice actually these blending brushes here obviously it's much shorter and it is much denser um, and I find this really really nice for doing as I said a more defined kind of line or kind of just a more precise blend like if I